So in this video, I will be covering an example that someone sent in for me to work out, and it has to do with Lagrange multipliers and uh, maximization of production. So before we actually get in, so before we actually get into the example, I want to give a little bit of background on Lagrange multiplier problems, just so we can understand exactly what's going on. So let's say that we have a function f, and it is this surface right here that I have drawn in 3D space. And let's also say that it is a function of x and y. And now let's say that we want to apply a constraint to this function, where that constraint is defined by the function g, which is equal to a constant, and is also equal to a function x and y. So in the example that we work out, we will consider a function f that represents the production of an item given these different variables x and y. And then we will consider a constraint g on these variables x and y. So we can represent that by this ellipse right here. And we'll call that g, where this solid circle represents the constraint g of x and y. And this projected dotted red line represents the constraint applied to f. So in Lagrange multiplier problems, we are only interested in this dotted line, which lies on f, but is subject to the constraint g. And the key thing here is recognizing that the gradient of g, which in this case are the normal vectors of this that, are, that point outside radially from the surface, these lines, which we will call the gradient of g, must be parallel to the gradient of f, which points in the direction of the steepest slope. So the gradient of g is parallel to the gradient of f. And if the gradient of g is not parallel to the gradient of f, then that means that we are not at a local extrema. And I'll be talking more about this when I do a calculus series, but for now we're going to use this idea to come up with the equation that for a Lagrange multiplier problem, we are interested whenever the gradient of f is parallel to the gradient of g, therefore the gradient of f is a scalar multiple of the gradient of g. And we'll be using this equation to solve the example that you sent in. Okay, so here is the actual problem that was sent in, and I wrote it out right here. So we have a chemical manufacturing plant that can produce z liters of chemical z, given x liters of chemical x and y liters of chemical y, where z is a function of x and y that equals 500x to the 0.6 power times y to the 0.3 power. Now we also have that the cost of chemical X is $10 per liter and the cost of chemical Y is $25 per liter. And we also have a max budget of $2,000. And with this information, we want to find the maximum production of chemical Z. So how many liters of chemical Z can we produce with our budget and given cost? So the function that we want to maximize is going to be this function Z. And our constraint is going to use this information right here. So we can write the constraint equation as g of xy is equal to $2,000, which equals 10x plus 25y. So what this means is that since chemical x costs $10 per liter, then however many liters we have, we multiply it by 10 to get the total cost of chemical x plus the total cost of chemical Y, which is $25 per liter, times the number of liters Y. And this can equal a maximum of $2,000 because that's her budget. So this is our constraint. And as I pointed out on the previous page, we said that to solve these equations, we use that the grad of F is equal to a scalar multiple of the grad of G, where in this case, F is this function right here. So let's calculate the grad of f, which is just going to be a vector partial derivative of z with respect to x and partial derivative of z with respect to y. And this has to equal a scalar multiple of the grad of g, which is going to be the partial derivative with respect to x. So dg dx and then dg dy. So when I plug in for these partials, what I get is dz dx is 0.6 times 500 
times x to the negative 0.4, that's just the power rule, and then y to the 0.3. And then we differentiate z with respect to y, which is going to be 0.3 times 500, x to the 0.6, y to the negative 0.7. And this is going to equal lambda, an unknown scalar, times the vector of dg dx, which is just 10, and dg dy, which is 25. So this gives us two equations and two unknowns, which are x and y. The first equation comes from the x component of these vectors, and then the second comes from the uh, second component of these vectors. So the two equations I get is 0.6 times 500 times x to the negative 0.4 y to the 0.3 is equal to 10 times lambda. And then the second equation I get is 0 0.3 times 500 x to the 0 0.6 y to the negative 0 0.7 is equal to 25 lambda. So there's equation one, there's equation two, but don't forget we also have equation three, which is just our constraint. So if I multiply equation one by five halves, I get five halves times 0 0.6 times 500 x to the negative 0.4, y to the 0.3, and this is going to equal 25 lambda, because I multiplied by 5 halves, but this also equals 25 lambda, so I'm just gonna set these two equations equal to each other. So this is going to equal 0.3 times 500, x to the 0.6, y to the negative 0.7. These 500s cancel out, and then 0.6 over two cancels out with 0.3, and I can rearrange this into 5y is equal to x. And then I can come back to this third equation, which was our original constraint, and I can substitute this into the equation. So what I get is 2,000 is equal to 10 times 5y plus 25y, which is equal to 75y, and now I can solve for y. I just divide 2,000 by 75, which is equal to 26 and 2 thirds. And then I take this result and I plug it back in here to get x, which is just 26 and 2 thirds times 5, which gives me 133 and 1 third. So here's the number of liters of y, and right here is the number of liters of x. Now, the person who submitted this problem also wanted me to explain the significance of lambda, uh, this guy right here. And we can easily evaluate lambda by just plugging it into this equation or this equation now that we know x and y. And when we solve for lambda, we end up getting a value of lambda is equal to 11.35. And what this represents is the change of the maximum with respect to the change of the constraint, which in this case is our budget. So D budget, the change of the maximum with respect to the budget. So lambda helps us decide whether or not our solution or our budget is an optimal budget. Now in this case, since we have a pretty large positive uh, Lagrange multiplier lambda, then we may want to increase our budget so that we can increase our production and make more money. So anyway, that's it for this problem. Uh, thanks for submitting the question and uh, have a good day.